Aleluia. Praise the Lord. Jesus. I welcome you all. Good morning to every one of you. Good afternoon. Good evening wherever you are. I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. You are all welcome. I welcome you all. I'm trying to invite friends. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I greet every one of you in the name of Jesus. You are all welcome. You are all welcome. I pray God Almighty will be with us and give us wisdom this hour in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we make this video, as we make this teaching this afternoon, I pray God Almighty will give us the wisdom for understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any power or spirit that we exalt in self above the knowledge of God and wisdom of God, I bring that power under the authority, under the submission of the Holy Spirit this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for keeping us alive. We thank God Almighty for He has kept us from January to December. We thank God. I greet every one of you. You are all welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. We have a very serious topic this afternoon to talk about. This is the part two of the last video I made. The part two of the last video. Ripe fruit with rotten taste character of a Christian. Today's video, I'm talking about our outward appearance, women outward appearance. I pray God Almighty will give us wisdom this hour in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray will give us understanding in his word in the name of Jesus. I pray as we study this afternoon, I pray God will help us. He will give us knowledge for understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we call upon you this hour, as we learn this topic this hour, as we talk about this, our outward appearance. Father, I pray, oh Lord, you give us wisdom to understand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Firstly, I will be reading from the book of Romans 12, Romans 12, verse, verse 12, verse, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I read in the name of Jesus. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This passage of the Bible is telling us that we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God Almighty, our body, our body. If you go to the Churches these days, you see half naked inside churches. The women, they dress half naked inside churches. They don't care what they wear inside churches. They dress like that, taking the, the worldly attire inside churches. 
and these things are not being rebuked by the preachers, by the, the, by the GOs, by the owners of those churches. They just leave those things like that inside church. And these attires have brought Jezebel, Jezebel spirit in, inside many churches these days. If you see around the whole world, the churches are not different from the night club. The churches are not different from the night club. You see people in the church, when you enter some churches, it looks like night club. When you enter inside the church, it looks like night club. You will see people, they dress the way they like. They do whatever they like inside the church. And these things are not being rebuked, are not being talked about. This, in, a, in, a, in, this, in our society today, there are so many crimes that, that is going on now, the crime of rape. The, the rape is caused by how women are dressed half naked in the street. That caused lots of rape now in our society. Even the, the, the small children, the way they dress them, their parents, every, every mother or the mother, some of the parents, they dress the, their, 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 half, their children half naked. They, they, say, they dress them seduce, they, they dress them like to seduce, like seduces uh, dressing to, to a small child. That child will be going here and there, carrying that uh, attire here and there. The innocent child will be going with a, with a, with a half-naked dressing. You boost that child to become an adult through dressing. You boost the little child to become an adult. A little child that, that is just growing up cannot be dressed properly. You just dress that child anyhow, almost half-naked on the street. I pray God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray this, this topic... And this is I pray God Almighty will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. As a Christian woman, we have to dress decently. We have to cover ourselves. We have to dress in a proper way, in a careful way. We have to dress ourselves, cover ourselves properly before we go to the public, even inside the churches. We have to dress properly. These things have, have to be teached and have to let people be aware of these things. You don't just wake up and dress any hat the way you like. You said you will say, hey, God, only look at my heart. I can look any hat I like. It's not like that, brethren. It's not like that. We have to dress properly whenever we are going out, even inside the church. It's very, very important. It's very, very important inside the church to dress properly, not to distract people, not to draw attention to yourself. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will give wisdom to women. If you are a true child of God, you want to walk in the way of God. You have to dress well. You have to dress yourself well as a Christian woman. You don't have to look like the worldly women. You don't have to look like an unbeliever in your dressing. God looks at your heart, yes, but God also looks at our body, the appearance, our outward appearance. God also looks at our outward appearance. Please, can you hear me? Can you hear me, please? I'm not seeing anything. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Please, can you hear me? Oh, please. Can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? Oh. Okay. Yes, okay. Thank you, sister. God bless you. I'll be reading from the book of 2 Corinthians 5.10. 5, Please, if you have your Bible, please, I, I beg you, if you have women friends, please invite them. Okay, please invite them, invite them. Let's talk about this issue concerning our appearance, our outward appearance. In the church, in the public, we have to appear decently as a godly woman, as a children of God Almighty. We have to appear decently in the public, in the church. We don't have to dress anyhow in the church, in the public, as a Christian woman. 
I read in the mighty name of Jesus. Second Corinthians 5.10 For we must appear, we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he has done, whether it is good or bad. This passage of the Bible is telling us that we will appear, for who will appear before the judgment seat of God, God Almighty, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. We will receive everything done in our body, whether good or bad. This body, we don't have to use this body anyhow. We don't have to say, God, only look on our heart. Let's, let me do my body the way I like. Let me dress the way I like. Let me, let me do how I like to this body. Let me rub, let me bleach my body. I can wear anything I like. That is not your, anybody's problem. And uh, God Almighty is searching my heart. Brethren, it's not like that. I'm talking to the women especially. To the women. If you go to the church today, you cannot differentiate inside church from the club. You cannot differentiate church from club. Inside churches, when you see, when you view the women, they are half naked. They are sitting half naked, using scarf to cover their knee. They are sitting half naked, even in the front of the pup uh, near the near the preacher. They will be sitting there and crossing their two legs. This is abomination before God Almighty. I decided to make this video to talk about this topic. Because I've been telling uh, men, some people that is close to me, I've been telling them, some I meet them in the street, some I chat with them, I've been telling them, telling them, but uh, my mind never rests. I said I will make this video. Today is on 11th of December 2017. I pray God Almighty, heaven and earth will bear me witness as I will make this video and talk about this issue of our appearance. Most of them said that uh, when they dress and, and when they don't dress uh, seductively like that, when they, don't, when they don't dress like that, maybe their husband will go after other woman. Your husband cannot go after other woman if your husband loves you. If your husband is in Christ Jesus Christ, then your husband will fear God Almighty. Your husband will not go out to carry another woman because you didn't dress seductively to him. It's not like that. It's not like that. We have to dress properly. Look what the Bible is saying in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.10. It said, for we, for, we all, for we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive things done in his body according to that he has done, whether good or bad. We we'll receive. We we'll receive judgment. We we'll receive things. Don't against this our body. We don't do this body anyhow. You say it's my body. God only look on my heart. No. God also look on the body. Holiness and righteousness is inwardly and outwardly. The inward part is, is the first one. Then outwardly. When you are when you are inwardly repented, where your outward we will still show the difference. You don't have to be like the world in dressing. You don't have to look like the world when you dress. You don't have to look like Jezebel when you dress. You don't have to dress, look like, look like Satan, satanic dresses, satanic clothes. You don't have to wear them when you dress. You don't have to dress like a Jezebel, painting your face, painting your fingers and everything. It's not like that, my brothers and sisters. We have to dress decently. We have to cover ourselves properly to reduce crime in the, in the society. Because of this dressing half naked have caused so much rape in our society. The Bible makes clear in the book of Matthew, Matthew 5, 28. He said, when a man look at a woman and got lost over that woman, that man have committed adultery already. It's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very big error for us to carry any attire that will make any man lost after us. If you are not covering yourself properly, men will lost after you. And that man, that man has committed adultery in his heart. It's a sin against, that man has sinned against God because of your appearance. Don't use your appearance to seduce people along the street. Don't use your appearance to sed seduce pastors, seduce mem uh, the, the brethren inside churches. Your appearance must be decent, dis you must dress decently. You must dress decently. You must fear God and cover yourself. Cover your nakedness, women. Cover your nakedness. Don't tell me God only look on your heart. God don't look, don't, don't care about our outward appearance. It's an error. I pray God Almighty will give you wisdom. 
Those preachers, I beg you in the name of God Almighty. I beg you in the name of God Almighty, tell your members the truth. Preach to the women, tell them, teach them how they will cover their self. Teach them how they will cover their nakedness. Teach them how they will cover their self. Teach them, you preachers, they are, they are, they are copying from you. Most people, they told, they, when I speak to them, they tell me that my pastor wife, my pastor wife used to dress, dress her with trousers. My pastor wife used to paint. My pastor wife used to wear short skirt. That doesn't, I, I, I look on her and she's anointed. Let me tell you, your pastor wife will not tell you because those people, they will not tell you because they don't want to lose members. They don't want you to get angry. They want, the, they want to tell you what you like. The gospel is not like that. The gospel will, will rebuke you. It rebukes you. Each time you read the word of God, the word of God needs to rebuke us. It rebukes you to walk in the way of God. You don't have to walk anyhow. Those preachers, they know that they, if they tell you, they, you will be angry, you will be offended. So that they don't lose members. Most of them don't tell you. They don't tell you. Most of them will not tell you. Even about the hair covering, the, the, that I wonder the, the, the churches now, they, very few people, few churches that cover their hair. They don't cover their hair because of those, those attached, those uh, fake hairs they are carrying on top of their hair. That is the reason why they don't cover their hair. The Bible make it clear that all women should cover their hair when praying or prophesizing. In the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11.15, the Bible make it clear that we should cover our head when praying or prophesizing. We should cover our head in the presence of God. But very few churches, they, they, they cover their head. They do cover their head. Very few people. They will tell you their, their hair is their covering. Which hair is your covering? The fake, attach, the fake hair you attach to your hair or your real hair. The Bible make it clear that we should cover our hair. Whenever you want to pray, whenever you want to prophesy, you must cover your hair as a woman. That one has become old, uh, old fashioned inside the church. It has become old fashioned inside church now. Nobody is talking about it. You enter church the way you like, you leave your hair the way you like, you don't cover your hair. Even the preachers, they don't rebuke these people that is, that is in this, in this uh, practice. I pray God will deliver his children from captivity, from bondage. They are under captivity. They have gone blind. They don't even understand the word of God. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible yourself. Study the, study the word of God. Read your Bible. Read your Bible so that you understand what God is saying. Don't look on what man is saying. Most of them are teaching. They are teaching, uh, they, they are teaching a diluted doctrine. They are teaching what you like to hear so that they don't lose members. Most of them are not called to prepare, to prepare people for heaven. They are not even teaching of uh, repentance and holiness, righteousness, sanctification. You will not hear it in any churches. Heaven and hell, you will never hear it. They just teach the doctrine they like. The, the, what they like to teach is what they will preach. Some of them, they, from, the, from the starting to the end, they will not open the, the Bible to read one, 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 uh, one verse from the Bible. I pray God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Even some of the preachers, some of the when no preachers, they do bleach their skin. Why will you be bleaching your skin? What are you bleaching for? Why are you bleaching your skin? You want to be like the white man. Have you seen any white man with charcoal rubbing in his body to become black man or black woman? Why are you bleaching? Bleaching is a, is, a very, is a serious sin before God Almighty. The way God created us, we want to change the skin. We want to change it to yellow, to brown. You bleach the skin. You bleach it. After bleaching, the skin, the skin will, will have either, either a, a skin badge or you will have a, you have a skin cancer. You have other problems with your skin. You'll be running to the hospital to know what you want to do about the skin. Let's read from the, from the book of... Jeremiah, Jeremiah 13, 23, about what God said about, about, the, about our skin, about the parable of God Almighty there. Pray that God will give you revelation concerning his word. You don't just read the word of God and leave it. You read it and pray for understanding. 
If you don't have understanding, you will never know what the word of God is saying. Don't read it like magazine. You read it where and pray for the spirit of God to teach you and to interpret it for you. Jeremiah 13, 23, 13, 23. I read. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his paws? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. God is asking here, it's a parable. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? The Ethiopian is black. Can the Ethiopian change his skin to white skin? Or the spot in a leopard, can leopard remove that spot? God created these things for his own glory. God has given us this skin for his own glory. He gave us the black skin for his own glory. God cannot make all of us look like one, one or the same. We cannot look like all, maybe everybody on earth here will be looking like Chinese. Or maybe everybody will be looking like the, the, the African. No. God created every country, every human differently in his own glory. We don't have to change our skin in bleaching. Bleaching is a sin. It's a serious skin, sin against God Almighty. You don't have to bleach your skin. If you bleach your skin, you are challenging God that the way he created your skin is not okay, is not good, or you don't like the color. We should repent of all these things. We should repent. It's not too late. We should repent. We should repent. Bleaching is a very serious sin against God Almighty. You don't bleach your skin. You are black. You want to be yellow. You want to be red. You want to be white. It's not like that. God created, created us well in, in, in his own image. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will help us. Some say that it's inside the heart. Repentance is inside the heart. Serving God is inside the heart. There's nothing to do about the outward. I can dress anyhow. I can look anyhow. Brethren, I, I beg you, it's a lie. It's a lie. Let us fear God Almighty. Let's fear God Almighty. Let's fear God Almighty. And these people, they are copying from the preachers. From, they are copying from their pastors. Some of the pastors, they, they do Jericho on their hair. They Jericho their hair. Men pastors. Why are you Jericho your hair? For what and for what reason? Most of them, they do Jericho. Some of them, they will speak, my pastor, do, do Jericho. Why will I not do Jericho in my hair? Why will I not paint my hair? Why are you jericho in your hair? God gave us hair in a different way and different shape and different form. There is no way you, our own black hair will become like the white hair. It's impossible. It's impossible. The black hair is for the black like afro it, it, it needs to be like that we don't have to be like another color in the hair we don't have to be like another color we have to thank god for how he created us in the book of psalm 139 verse 14 he says there that I will, I will praise god i will glorify god how he has created me he created me beautifully and fearfully wonderfully he's there he's there after creation in the book of genesis genesis 1 27 if you read down, you see how God created after creation. God said it's good. After the creation, he said it's good. It was good. After he created man, created things he created, he said it was good. We don't need to add to what God has created. We don't need to be removing. We don't need to be removing and be adding. No. I pray we'll repent. I pray God will give us time to repent. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray God Almighty, we have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray God will have mercy, have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you read the book from the book of uh, Zephaniah, if you, if you read there Zephaniah 1, 8, you will see how God has pronounced punishment upon our attire. Let me read from the book of Zephaniah. Okay. 
I read. And it shall come to pass in that day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princess and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. God is saying here that he will punish them. The strange apparel is the, is the, is the attire that is attire that is not decent. We have to dress decently. We have to dress decently as a Christian woman. We have to dress and cover ourselves properly. We should stop dressing half naked to the presence of God, even along the street. We have to dress, dress decently. There must be difference in, in your dressing from the dressing of an unbeliever or a world-lived someone. We have to dress decently. Repentance is, is from the inside also to the outside. After the inside, you see the outside. It must be from the inside, but after the inside, the reflection, the reflection outside will be, will be decent. You dress decently. We don't have to look like, a, like Jezebel or dress satanic dress. There are many clothes now. You see them, they sew them anyhow. If the front are covered, you see the back open to the waist. Satanic clothing, worldly clothes. This clothing, we have to run away from it. We have to run away from it. Immoral dressing to seduce. People dress immorally and enter in, into the church to seduce the preacher, to seduce the young brethren inside church. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will help us. Even men, also men, yes, thank you. Some of the men now look at the trousers they are wearing. Very tight trousers. We tight and show all their all their all, all their shape. Show all their upside, all their shape. The trousers will, will, will be will be will, will be very tight. Like tight, like the tight women used to wear along the street. They will wear it and wear open chest. What are these clothing for? We have to be wise. As a Christian, as a believer, our dressing must be different. Our dressing must be different. When buying clothes, you buy decent clothes. When buying clothes, you buy different clothes. If care is not taken, take your, take your material to the tailor. They sew decently for you, decent clothes. You don't go naked along the street. You don't, you don't dress any half. Dress half naked along the street. If you think you dress, if you dress half naked, that will prevent your husband from going to another woman. You are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. It's only God Almighty. If the man has fear of God, the man will not go after other woman. Don't say, I must, I must dress like this so that my husband will not look outside. No. It's not like that, brethren, my sister. Pray for your husband. Pray for him. Let God Almighty touch his heart. If he has fear of God, he will not go after another woman. He will not go after another woman. Don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let Satan deceive you. If you put that in your mind and in your spirit, it's how it will be to you. It's how it will be. It's how it will be. You will not ever live to do those things. You, you will continue dressing anyhow. Dressing uh, naked, dressing, uh, dressing uh, half naked to the street, exposing yourself here and there. It's only God that makes, makes the heart of men to be in their wife or in their, with their wife. It's not how you dress. It's not how you dress. We have to fear God. We have to fear God Almighty. We have to fear God Almighty. We don't have to look on human. Even that your husband, a day will come that your husband will die. A day will come, even the wife will die. No one will follow each other. And when you are facing your judgment, your husband cannot help you there. When you are facing your judgment, also the, the, the wife cannot help the husband. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We don't have to fear man in any way. If your husband is forcing you to dress in that way, tell your husband that it's God first before him. You have to fear God. You have to, you have to fear God before him. I know we have to submit to the husband's better. The submission means that, the, that the, the submission will be according to the will of God. It's not out of the will of God. 
It's not out of the will of God. You submit to your husband, but in the will of God Almighty. It's not out of the will of God. Don't let your husband push you for, to sin. Don't let him push you to the world and push you to sin. No. It's not like that. It's not like that. I pray God Almighty will help us. If you are just joining, we are, um, we are talking about our appearance, women appearance. If you have any question, you can drop your question. If you have any contribution, I'm here. You can drop your contribution. If you have women pastors, women friends, you can invite them. Let's talk about this issue. Let's talk about this topic. Our women appearance, godly women appearance. Christian woman appearance, how woman should be should appear, our dressing, how should we dress? How should we dress? Even this, uh, this uh, mask they wear on their face, they said it's makeup, it's mask. God, re God rejected it in the, in the Bible. Those makeup are, are, are satanic. When you paint your face, your, your shape of your face will go off of your face. The color will remove. The color will go to another color. The shape will be another shape because of those makeup, those masks you wear on your face. Those masks you wear, you said this makeup, it will take your face to another shape, another shape, another shape of face. You have another shape with those masks. It's mask. It's not makeup. You are not making up anything. And those makeup makes someone to grow older than his, than her age. When I was wearing makeup, I was not like this. I was not looking younger like this. When I was wearing makeup, I'm more than 40 years, but look at my skin, the way it looks like. For four years, I've, not, I've, I've stopped using makeup on my face. Those makeup is sin before God Almighty. It's a sin because you are changing the color of your face and taking the shape of your face to another face shape. It's a sin before God Almighty. I pray God will deliver us from captivity and bondage. I pray will deliver us from every worldliness, every spirit of worldliness fighting women. In this end time, see, see, see the whole churches with crowd. You see churches full of population. You see them, all of them, they would, they would dress carnally, worldly. Inside church, you dance every time, hallelujah, hallelujah. They are not telling you the end time messages. They are not preaching it to these churches. I pray God will help us. I pray God will deliver his children in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God Almighty will help us. I pray. I pray so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at the society. The society is full of rape. When you dress your little child like an adult, you are boosting that child to be an adult. You boost that child. Instead of that child to look little and young, that child will look mature. This ungodly dressing has caused many rape to our society today. It has caused many rape. It has caused many divorce in, uh, in marriages. Many people, many divorce here and there. It's all this dressing, all this satanic and uh, seducive dressing people carry inside the church, carry everywhere as a woman. We have to cover our nakedness. Even in the social media, see naked picture. Why are you putting that pictures in the naked in the in the in the social media? For attention, for att to attract people. Some say that married, there's no problem, but there's no problem. People are sinning over you because of your picture, because of your appearance. The Bible makes it clear in the book of Matthew, Matthew 5, 28, that any man that looks on a woman and lusts after her has committed adultery already. Do you know how many brothers you have sent to hell because of your appearance? Do you know how many brothers and how many men you have sent to hell fire because of your, your dressing, the way you look like? Look what the Bible says in the book of Matthew, Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already, with her already in his heart. Because those seducive look, those, those seducive attire, those, those ungodly attire, it produces lust. It will produce lust to the heart of men. 
It will bring loss to the heart of brethren, to the heart of brothers and brothers inside the church, sometimes to the pastor. This dressing, this, uh, this, this, this something have caused to the, the, the worldliness have entered inside church. Now you see Je Jezebel's spirit operating in the church. Operating in the church. Instead of the pastor to preach what he is supposed to preach, the pastor will be talking story in the pulpit. Even they will not open the Bible to teach from the Bible. They will just talk story from morning to night till they close. Because Jezebel's spirit is taking over the churches. Jezebel's spirit is taking over the churches. Some tell me my pastor wife used to dress uh, with trouser, used to make up, used to don't, even don't cover her hair. It's not an, a good example. Those pastor wife, people are following you. People are looking after you. Preach to them. Preach to them. Teach them. Teach the women. Teach them. Teach them how they will dress properly. Teach them. Teach them the way of God. Teach them the way of holiness and righteousness. Not only being their leader or being their mama. They call you mama. They call you mama or call you a big, big mommy. No. Teach them the way of God. Teach them the way of holiness and righteousness. I pray God Almighty will deliver his children. I pray God will deliver his children. Many have been held under captivity in so many churches, in so many gatherings, in so many organizations. They said it's church. It's church. What are they teaching you? What are they showing you? Which example are they showing you? I pray God will deliver us. Most of the problem we are facing in our society today is the, is the way we dress, is the way we dress, the way we look like. Jezebel is a very strong demonic spirit. The, 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 the Christians have taken Jezebel, the worldliness, from outside to inside church. You will go inside church, you will not differentiate church from a, from a club. You will not differentiate church and gathering from a, from a party. Sometimes the, the pastors, not knowing what to teach or what to preach about, they will call comedian. Comedian to come and crack joke inside, inside church. To come, and be saying, to come and be cracking joke inside church. The comedians, they often use the name of God to, to crack joke inside church. What is all this? I pray God Almighty will help us. We should repent. We should repent quickly. We should repent quickly. The world is coming to an end. We should repent quickly from all this worldliness. We should repent quickly. There is no time, no time left. Comedians inside, inside the pupils, instead of preaching, they bring comedians inside church. To crack joke, people will be laughing. The major things to be teach, to be talked about, no way. They are not talking about it. There are most, most part of these Bible verses, they, 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 they never preach it from the church. They will never teach the, the congregation about these things. Only the grace of God that will help, help someone to know all these things. Only the grace of God. If not the grace of God that found me, I'm still there. I'm going to church more than 30 years in my life. I'm going to church. Ne nobody ever told me about how holiness and righteousness, the way we walk, sanctification. Nobody ever told me. Nobody ever told me. It's only pre prosperity preaching. They, they prophesy to you how you will prosper. But they will not tell you how you will make your way to see God, how you make heaven at last. They will never preach it to you. When you know the truth, if you are not careful enough, they will be fighting you. They call you all different types of names name along, along with you. Even people will be running away from you. I pray God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's read from the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 3.16. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. We are talking about our appearance, women appearance, godly woman appearance, our appearance as a Christian. You are all welcome in the name of Jesus. I'm, I want to read from the book of 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not 
that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. He said the Spirit of God dwell in us. We are the temple of God Almighty. The body, our body is the temple of God Almighty. We don't have to use our body anyhow because it's the temple of God Almighty. The Spirit of God dwell in us. We don't have to do this body anyhow. The body belongs to God. The body belongs to God Almighty. We don't use it anyhow because it, 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 we can use it anyhow. No. We have to have fear of God. Anything we do to our body, we are count of these things. These things we are doing on earth here. After this life, we are count of what we have done on this life. What we have done to our body, we will give account. Each and every one of us will give account. I pray God will deliver us from bondage, from captivity. Most of us have gone into captivity. We are attending churches. Churches are not saying anything about this issue. They just allow anything inside church. Any, anyhow, someone like, any way you like, you come. Anyhow you like, you come. Yes. But anyhow you like and any way you like. But along the line, they have to teach these things so that women will know, so that we will know the way we have to be as a Christian and as a godly woman. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will help us. If you have any contribution or any question, you can write it down. You can write it down. If you have any contribution, you can contribute in the name of Jesus. You can write your contribution. If you have any question, you can ask your question. God Almighty will give us the wisdom to answer you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's open to the book of Genesis. Genesis 1, 1.27. After God created us, God said it was good and okay. 1.27. Okay, I read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. He said God created us in his own image. We are the image of God. We will mind and take, be careful the way we will use our body. We are the image of God Almighty. God created us so fine. God created every, every race in a different color, in a different way. If you see the Chinese people, they, are, they have their different shape of their face. The black people, the Nigerian, the African, the Asia, they have their shape of face too. After creation, God said it was good. We don't have to bleach ourselves. We don't have to bleach our skin. No. We don't have to be like the, the white people as a black person. Have you ever seen any black man or Chinese man rubbing charcoal in his face or her face to become like black woman? We have to appreciate the way God created us. We have to appreciate the way God created us. Those things are seen before God Almighty. Bleaching of skin. When you bleach your skin, you become another color and that skin will be damaged. That skin will be damaged. It will not look like the real skin again because you have tempered with it with a cream. I pray God will help us and give us understanding. God created us so beautifully. He created us in his own image. That is what the Bible is saying. He said God created us in his own image. We don't have to reject our color as a black man or woman. We don't have to reject the way we look like. No, we have to be happy in our, in our color, in the way God has created us. Those bleaching of, 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 uh, of, uh, of skin, it, it spoils the skin. Formerly, I used to, the, skin, the cream I used to rub is the cream that, have to, that has to bleach the skin. That was four years ago. But I stopped using it and look at my, my face, the way my face look like. I'm more than 40 years, but look at this, the skin, the way the skin look like. 
I was even regretting for my years of vanity when I spent spend a lot of money in a making up and a bleaching and using worldly, worldly things in my body. I pray God will help us. God will give us wisdom. God Almighty will give us wisdom to understand. I pray every, every, spirit, of, every spirit of vanity, every carnal kind of spirit in the life of women, in our life, I pray God will remove it for us. Take it away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray God Almighty will deliver us from all these spirits. Because these spirits are very strong spirits. When I used to make up, I used to order my makeup. I don't buy makeup in anywhere, in any hair shops. I used to order them. That spirit was with, very strong on me. I used to buy makeups with name. I don't buy any hair makeup, the ones I use. I got addicted addit to makeup. I don't buy any hand names. I don't go to the China shop and buy makeup. No. I order my makeup, the ones I used that four years, five years ago. But later I throw everything away. I realize that it is no use, it's of no use. That is mask. When you wear those things, it's mask on your face. Your face will change. Your face will change. We all give account of our body. The Bible makes it clear to us that we'll give account. In the book of uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 10, it says we'll give account. We'll give account of our, 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 our deed, what we do to our body. After the end of this world, we'll give account. We'll give account. We have to fear God. We don't have to do this body anyhow, use the body anyhow, no. Second Corinthians 5, 10. Okay, let me repeat this verse again. I'm reading from the book of 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of God, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he had done, whether it, it be good or bad, that everything we have done in this body will give account we we'll receive what, what, whether it is good, we'll receive the good, the good reward. Whether it is bad, we'll receive it also. We have to fear God Almighty. We have to, we have to live our life and, and please God, not to please men, not to please your husband, not to please your friends. We have to, our life has to be in line with the word of God. We don't have to do things anyhow. If your pastors are not telling you these things, I pray God will deliver you from that gathering in the name of Jesus. If your pastor is not preaching it to you, I pray God will deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer yourself. Go to God in prayer. Pray. Humble yourself and ask God, God Almighty, these things, these things they are saying, is it true? God will show you. God will speak to you. God will speak to you. God will speak to you. God is everywhere. Pray. Have faith and pray. Pray. God will show you. God will reveal to you. God will reveal to you. Even some of the pastors, the women pastors, they, they, they still continue wearing trouser. Trouser is not woman clothing. It's not woman clothing. Each time I put that po post in Facebook, the post cost, it will cost a lot of comment and, uh, and argument there. But trouser is not a woman cloth. Because that trouser reveals the, sh the, the shape of a woman. Our body needs to be covered properly. When you wear skirt and wear trouser, there's big difference in it. Trouser is not woman clothing. I pray God Almighty will help us. I pray God will help us. God will deliver his church from the hand of Jezebel. I pray God will deliver his church from, the, from worldliness in the name of Jesus. I pray God will have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are all welcome. If you are just joining, we are talking about women appearance. How women should appear. How we should, be, we, we should dress. How woman should look like outwardly. Some say it's the heart they are using to serve God. Yes, it's the heart. But what about our appearance? Can your heart be clean? Then you appear worldly. 
or your heart be clean, then you appear like, like a Jezebel outwardly? No. There must be difference in the appearance of a well, godly woman and from a, an, an unbeliever. The appearance must be different. Our appearance must be different. If the churches is not saying it, I pray God will help you. Pray to God. Ask God. Ask God. Ask God Almighty. These things I'm hearing, is it truth? Father, is it truth? These things I'm hearing, is it truth? God, help me, is it truth? Ask God. Ask from God. If you just sit back and be waiting for the, for the doctrine of the church or from the, from the, the preaching of, the, of your pastor or from the, of the church, you will never hear this thing from them. You will never hear it. Never. Never. Never will you hear it. Because when they preach it, when they preach it, the members, they will lose members. That's why you see them, they don't preach it. They don't talk about it. I pray God Almighty will have mercy upon us. If you have your Bible, let's open to the book of Romans, Romans 6. Pray God will deliver us. Okay, I read. Romans 6. I read from verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Let no sin, I repeat, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in lust thereof. He said we should not let sin reign in our body, in your mortal body, that is your physical body. We shouldn't let sin reign in it. When you dress any hair, you, 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 you dress half naked, you are using your body. You are using your body as a sin. When you dress any hair, dress half naked, you are using your body as a sin. It's against God Almighty. We should repent. We should repent and dress properly as a woman. As a Christian woman, we should dress properly. You don't dress any hair, naked yourself, your sensitive parts, open it anywhere, anyhow. No. We should dress properly and cover ourselves properly. We should dress properly. This dressing any hair have, have caused so, many, so, much, so much problem in the society. If you go, go to the news, you see how, how the, the, the record rape every season, every time. It's because of the way we, we dress, the way we look like. When you are properly covered, you will not draw attention quickly or easily when you are properly covered, when you cover yourself properly as a woman. You will not draw attention. You hardly draw attention. When you pass on the way, you pass quietly and without attention. But when you dress anyhow, dress half naked, dress opening your sensitive part, bringing out your, your, your sensitive part to be, to be seen in the public, you will see attention, you will be drawing attention. You will be drawing attention. We should dress well to the glory of God. We should dress properly as a woman, as a Christian woman. We should dress well as a Christian woman. These things have brought worldliness inside churches. We dress anyhow to the church the way we like, the way we like to look, we look like that. Even the hair covering, they, 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 they just remove that from, from the teaching of the, of the doctrine of all churches now. They, don't, they remove it. They have removed it. They remove it. Go to churches now, they don't cover their hair. The Bible make it clear that we should cover our hair with veil. In the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 5. 11, 5. He said we should cover our hair with veil whenever praying or prophesizing. Why should we go to church without hair covering? Most of the population today in the churches, you see them, they don't cover their hair. 
When you emphasize on that, on that, they will tell you that their own hair is their covering. Which hair are you carrying? The, the artificial hair, the demonic hair you put on your hair is your hair. It's not even your hair. The Bible makes it clear that we should use veil to cover our hair. The veil signifies something like this, like cloth. Veil is like this. It's not the hair. This one is the veil. Anything like cloth is the, it's called veil. It's not our hair. It's not our hair. There is some, some, some uh, white, uh, white uh, churches I came across here in, uh, in Spain, yeah. They, they practice holiness, but uh, they don't cover their hair. When I asked the question, the, the, the woman was telling me that uh, their hair is long, the, as it is long, is their covering. I said, no, it's veil. The, the Bible makes it clear that we should cover our hair with a veil. Whenever we are in the presence of God, we should cover our hair. That doctrine, they have, they have, they have removed it. This, uh, this pa passage of the Bible have gone out of, of reading. They don't read it again. They don't remind women again to cover their hair. You enter church the way you like. You, 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 you leave your hair open without covering. Without covering your hair. I pray God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God Almighty will deliver us, we women. I pray God will have mercy upon us. I pray God Almighty will give us the, the spirit of repentance. I pray God Almighty will give us the spirit of obedience in the mighty name of Jesus. The preachers, I beg you in the name of God, if you are watching me, you are a preacher, you are a pastor, you are a pastor wife, you are a pastor, you are a woman preacher, I beg you in the name of God Almighty, let women in your congregation, let them know the 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 the, the the way women should cover their, their hair, the way women should dress, let them know. Let them know. Our dressing matters so much. The way, the way we appear, let, us, let them know. We don't, we, we don't dress half naked inside church. Those half naked dressing, that, that dressing have brought worldliness inside the church, have brought a Jezebel, spirit of Jezebel inside the church. And this, this fashion, this dressing have caused many churches, they are now in fashion parade. They are now in fashion parade, not a church, church issue again. They go there to display their clothes, the clothes they wear. They go there they, to display it. Some of us, we enter church late so that people will observe and see what we are wearing. I pray God Almighty will have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God we have mercy upon us. This thing has caused competition inside churches. Instead of going to, to church to, to, to go and listen to, to the word of God and weep and repent, you go there to, to, for competition. Before the Sunday, you, you will arrange what you will wear and everything you, you will use. You will arrange them. That The word of God is not in your mind to listen. And this thing has read many people to, 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 be, to, be, to be in debt. Some buy credit to meet up with the fashion of the, of the world these days. All these are worldliness. It's not godliness, it's worldliness. If you have money to buy clothes, you can buy, buy, but buy decent clothes. You wear decent clothes and, and cover yourself properly as a woman. As a woman. I pray God will have mercy upon us. I pray God will deliver us women from worldliness, from the spirit of worldliness. From the spirit of worldliness, I pray God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Competition of clothes. Instead of going to church for, to repent, you will be focused on the clothes, on the clothes people are wearing. Some enter late so that people, they would, they would draw attention. Those half naked dressing, it draws attention. When you enter those young brothers, those young repented people, it draws their mind. It draws their it draws their mind to, to lust. To lust. It draws their mind to lust. Instead of listening to the Simon or to, to, to the teaching of the day, they, they will focus on that nakedness, the naked body, and be washing it. And be lusting after the naked body. I pray God will help us. 
I pray God Almighty will help us. I pray God will help us. The preachers, I beg you in the name of God Almighty, I beg you, let these women know. Let them know. Teach them how to cover their self. Teach them how to cover their self. Teach them how to cover their self. Those half-naked clothes, no, it's not good. Women need to dress decently and wear properly covered, wear covered. I pray God will have mercy upon us. The preachers preach about these things. Why, why the churches? Why are you not preaching about these things? Why? So that you don't lose members. Preach about these things. It's only the grace of God that, that delivered me. I was there before. I was there before. All my focus is what I will wear. All my focus is the type of hair I will make. I don't know any verses of the Bible. Only that, only John 3, 16 I know in the, from the Bible. I don't know because I don't read my Bible. I don't read my Bible. I only listen to what they read. Sometimes I go, I go without my Bible. When the time has gone far, when I will be in the mirror making up and making marks in my face, I run, out, I run away and leave my Bible. I don't even take my Bible. I will just go without Bible to the church. I thank God for, for, for setting me free. I thank God Almighty for setting me free. I thank God for giving me serious deliverance from all these things. These things are worldliness. These things are worldliness. These things are worldliness. In the book of Mark, Mark 8, 36, 37, it says, What shall it profit a man if we gain the whole war and lose our soul? And what will a man give in an exchange for his soul? What are we going to give in an exchange of our soul, brethren? What are we going to give in an exchange of our soul? Is it worldliness? Is it this clothing? Is it this halfway naked we are, we, are, we are doing? Is it makeup you used to exchange your soul? Is it a satanic attire you used to exchange your soul? Is it Jezebel's attires you used to exchange your soul? What, is, what will be the gain and what will you use to exchange your soul? If we gain all these things, after all this fashion, after all this fashion, after all this makeup, after all this mask, if we lose our soul, what will be our gain to lose our soul? What will be our gain? I pray God will help us. God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God will deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. God will deliver us in the name of Jesus. The way of God is not pleasant. It's not pleasant. You have to, you have to sacrifice. It's not an easy journey. You have, to, you have to sacrifice so much things. You have to, you have to let go so much things. You have to let many things go. You have to let many things go. The way is very narrow. Matthew 7, 13, 13 and 14 says that is straight is the way that leads, leads to eternity. That, 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 that wide way, the wide way is broad. That broad way is to destruction. That broad way is to destruction. That broad way will allow you for many things. We allow you for many things. This flesh, we have to kill this flesh. This flesh we are carrying that, that pushes us to, to sin. This flesh that we are carrying, we have to allow our, our spirit to be to be to be to be up to be to oppress the, the flesh. Not the flesh to be oppressing us. We have to deal with our flesh. Without dealing with this flesh, worldliness will never go out of our life and our body. Worldliness will never go out of our body. Yes, sister, thank you. Uncovering, uncovering their hair bring pride. Yeah. Those uncovering, that not covering your hair like that brings pride to you. Because that, that hair you have made there, you, are, you want to display them. You want people to see them. You want people to see those hair you are carrying. Those artificial things you are carrying. Those hair are demonic. They are demonic hairs. Where is your hair, women? Where is your hair? Where is your God-given hair? Where is your hair, women? Where have you taken your hair to? Where is your hair? Where is our hair, women? Women, where is our hair? Where is the hair God created us with? Where is the hair? Where is our hair? We don't need to reject our hair. We don't need to put the Chinese hair in our hair. 
Do you ever see any white man or Chinese man wearing afro? No. No. No, we have to appreciate the way God has created us. We have to thank God and appreciate how God has created us. We have to appreciate the way God has created us. Let's read from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 5. Let's see what God says there in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 5, 20. 2021. If you have contribution or question, you can tap it down there. I pray Holy Spirit of God will give us wisdom to answer you in the name of Jesus. I read Isaiah 5:20. Woe unto them that call good, that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe un- 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. The Bible is saying, Woe unto them that call evil good. And good evil. And woe unto them, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. That are wise in their own eyes. How can we be wise in our own eyes? When God has given you, gave given us this hair, we have Afro hair, we black people. We are wise in our own eyes. We want to put uh, put attachment. We want to carry the Chinese hair, the Chinese threshing hair. We want to carry the Indian hair. We want to carry the Bra- Bra- Brazilian hair on our hair. When God has given us Afro, we want to carry Brazilian. We want it like an uh, like an uh, a Chinese woman. God, the Bible said, Woe unto us that are wise in our own eyes. Isaiah 5.21 Woe unto us that are wise in our own eyes. We are wise in our own eyes. Our color of our skin, we want to change it to another color. Because we are wise in our own eyes, our hair want to change it. We want to make it look like Chinese hair. Because we are wise in our own eyes. Our skin want to change it to the white color, like like the American people or maybe the the the, the Indian uh, skin. When God have given you a nice skin, we African we have the best skin so far on earth here. Our skin is is, a, is our skin is different because it protests. If when you enter some with black skin, the the skin the, the skin will not be affected. When the white people enter sun with their skin, you will see the sun will burn their skin. It will peel their skin and burn it. We peel it and burn it because our own skin is more protected. When you bleach, when you bleach your skin with so much cream, when you bleach it later, that skin will, will, will lose its uh, its uh, natural natural way God has made it. Most of most of us most of us black people we have the skin cancer because of so much uh, bleaching on the skin. With the skin we develop skin cancer. Some of us we carry cream badges. The cream badges are like uh, when the face we have other color, different colors. I pray God will deliver us. When you see some people, even the Africans, God Almighty created some of them very yellow. I have a girlfriend here in, in Spain, here in Barcelona. She's so yellow right from when I know her. I knew her since like 20 years ago. She's still like that till today. She's still, she's still like that till today. But because God gave her that skin like that, I don't have to see her like that and want to turn to her, turn my skin to her skin. No, because God gave her that skin. God gave her the skin like the white people. She's very yellow. I've known her for 20 years. She's still like that. She still looks, her skin still remains like that because it's how God created her. As for me, I cannot be using those cream to change my skin to her own, to the way she looks like. No. Bleaching is a very serious skin, a very serious sin against God Almighty. It's a very serious sin against God Almighty. See what the Bible is saying in the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 5, 20, 21. He said, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. He said, Woe unto us 
when we are wise in our own eyes. We are wise in our own eyes. If we are not wise in our own eyes, we will not try to change our skin the way God has created us. We will not try to change anything God has made in our body. These things have caused so many people sudden death. Even some people, they want to do surgery in their body. Some want to add a breast to their breast. Some want to add buttocks in their, in their buttocks. Through this uh, operation and through this, going through this operation, some of them can, they, they die along because they want to change the, the shape of their body. Because they want to change the shape of their body. I pray God will help us. I pray God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are just joining, we are talking about our outward appearance, women's outward appearance. How a Christian woman, a godly woman should look outwardly. That is the topic we are talking today. We have to look decently. Our dress, we have to dress decently to the glory of God. We don't have to draw attention. We don't have to draw attention with our dressing. I pray God will deliver us in the name of Jesus. I pray God will have mercy upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray God will help us. God will help us. God will remove everything that has covered our understanding. God will remove every veil in our eyes that have covered us not to see these things. I pray God will touch every pastor's. Every people that is teaching these people, carrying them and teaching them, they are not showing them the way of God, but they are showing them the way of prosperity. They are not showing them the way of God. There is heaven, there is hell. There is a way we will live on earth here. After this earth, there will be judgment. We will face judgment before God Almighty. We will face judgment before God Almighty. We don't live the life as, as we like. We live according to the will of God. We live according to the word of God. We live and respect God Almighty. Not to respect men. Not to respect men. I pray the preachers, I pray they preach about these things. They are not preaching about it. They are not preaching about it. Our, the women are tired. How the women need to look like. They are not preaching about it. If you go to churches today, you see half-naked dressing inside churches. Inside churches, they are not even rebuking any of them. They leave them because they don't want to lose members. If you are a preacher, I beg you in the name of God Almighty. If you are viewing this video, go to your congregation. Let them know, let them know, let them know, let the women, mostly the women, let them know how they will cover their nakedness inside churches, even outside. Preach to them. Let them know. Preach to them in love. Don't cast them away. Don't cast them away. Preach to them in love. Let them know what the word of God is saying. Don't let them know what your, own, your, what your opinion is about it. Let them know the word of God. Let them know the word of God. We have to fear God Almighty. We have to fear God Almighty. We have to fear God Almighty. Let's see what the Bible is saying in the book of uh, Romans, Romans 1, 18. What God will do to these preachers? What God will do to these preachers? They have hide the word of God. They are preaching their own doctrine. The word of God has been hidden. They are preaching their own doctrine. See what the word of God is saying to you preachers, to you pastors. That is not teaching the, your congregation the word of God. See what the word of God is saying here. Romans 1, 18, I read. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. He said the wrath of God will be revealed upon those who hold the truth in an unrighteousness. They know, they know the truth. They hold it. They hold it down there in, an, in unrighteousness. What they teach, they teach it diluted. They dilute the word of God. Don't dilute the word of God. As a preacher, don't dilute the word of God. If you dilute the word of God, the wrath of God will be upon you. Those blood, God Almighty will ask those blood from you. 
The blood of your congregation will be asked from you. They will be asked from you. Those people you have put under captivity, under bondage of your doctrine, God Almighty will ask them their blood. God Almighty will require their blood from you. As a preacher, as a leader, let these people know these things. Let these people know these things. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know in love. Tell them you fear God. Tell them you fear God. Not only prosperity. Not only leading them in the way of prosperity. Teach them the way of God. Teach them the way of God. I beg you in the name of God Almighty. Heaven will bear me witness today, uh, seven, uh, uh, 11th of uh, December. Today is 11th of December 2017. I pray God and heaven and earth will bear me witness for this video. If you are hearing me, you are a preacher, you are a pastor, you are a woman preacher, you have congregation, you have people you are carrying, I beg you, tell them the truth. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Women don't, don't dress any hair. You don't just dress any hair. You don't dress half naked along the street. You don't go half naked inside the church. No. Let them know to cover their nakedness. Women must cover their nakedness. They don't just stay like that or dress any how they like. We have to cover our nakedness. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I read this passage of the Bible again, once again. Romans 1, 18. For the word of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness? Who hold the truth in unrighteousness? They are holding the truth in unrighteousness. In unrighteousness. They, they have the truth. They hold it down in unrighteousness. Unrighteousness, not righteous. Unrighteousness. You know these things. To speak them out, you are afraid. You are afraid. You are afraid. They are not teaching people. Only to prosper. Only to prosper. Come and sow seed. Only prosperity doctrine you will hear for all over the world now. Anywhere you go to, only prosperity preaching. No. What about the souls? Where are they dying to? Are we going to last forever in this world? No. If we die, where are we going to? Where are we going to? We have to face judgment of God. No repentance in grave is appointed unto a man to die once. After death is judgment. Hebrews 9.27 Hebrews 9.27 said, He is appointed unto a man to die once and after death is judgment. There is no second chance after death. There is no second chance. I pray God will help us. God Almighty will help us. I pray God will deliver us, deliver us women from worldliness, deliver us from, from carnality. God has known before now. If you read the book of Psalm, Psalm 94, 11, God says we are, we are carnal. He searches our heart. He said we are carnal, carnal minded. Psalm 94, 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. 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 We think vanity. The thought of men are vanity. What are we pursuing in this passing away world? The world is going by. It's passing away. The world is passing away. It's passing away. It's passing away. It's passing away. Even the rap, if, if the world don't end today or tomorrow, people are getting old. They are dying away. Some people, they are not even old, they are dying away. It's passing away, the world. It's passing away. It's passing away. It's passing away. We have to be aware of the season and time we are now. We have to be aware, see what the world have become to now. We have to be aware of things that is happening. Every of the prophecy in the Bible, all has come, already come to pass. All have come to pass. All have come to pass. All have come to pass. We have to know the season we are in now. We have to know the season. Not to pursue vanity. Not to pursue worldliness. We have to know the season we are now. We have to know the season. We have to know the season. We have to check our life daily. 
Each minute, every moment, we have to check our life. If we are walking in the way of God. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will help us. Will deliver us women from vanity, from worldliness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray God will have mercy, have mercy upon us. I pray will deliver us. I pray will deliver us. As a woman, if you if you if you are confused with what I'm speaking or this teaching, go to God in prayer. Pray to God. Tell God to reveal to you. You see what God will show you. God will show you. He said we should call upon Him. He will show us mighty things and secret things which we know not. All the word of God is true. No one is lie. No one is lie. Go to God in prayer. Pray to God. Pray to God. Stop following man. If you follow man, he will get you nowhere. Stop following man. Stop following man. Those preachers, there are many passages of the Bible, they never preach. They will never preach. They will never preach till they finish their, their, their stay on earth. Yeah, they will never preach it because it will not be pleasant in the ears of the hearer of the congregation. They will not preach it. They like to preach what people will hear. They like to preach what will suit people, what they will be happy of. When they prophesy prosperity, richness, and, and riches to them, they will be happy. But when they will tell them repentance, they will be angry. That's why you see they don't preach repentance messages. The churches should be teaching about repentance, about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, about the preparation of the second coming of Jesus. The churches should, 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 should leave prosperity preaching a bit. They should face on, focus on the major things that is on ground now. I pray God will help us. God will deliver us. I pray God Almighty will deliver us in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I pray God will help us. God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray God will deliver us. Deliver us from worldliness. Deliver us from, from carnality. I pray God Almighty will set us free. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray God will have mercy upon us. He will touch our life. We women. 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 All churches, the women are more in population. If you go to a congregation, to, to, popul- to the gathering of, a, of a brethren or to, to churches, you will see the women are more. The women are more. But how are we dressing? How are outward appearance need to be? How are we dressing? You dress half naked to the church, the brothers there will be, will be lost in after you. You dress half naked, you dress anyhow the way you like, to the church. I pray God Almighty will have mercy upon us women in the name of Jesus. I pray God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It takes the grace of God for you to know these things. It's by chance that God delivered me. It's by chance. It's not by my own power or by what I was hearing in the church. No. It's by chance I got delivered. It's by chance. It's by chance I didn't forget. I didn't forget. These things I've spoken and spoken to most people that is close to me. I've told them, I've told them so much excuse, so much things. I've write and write on Facebook. Sometimes I got insults, they will, they will embarrass me and insult me. They will tell me, go and remove that post you are posting there. Go and remove it. Go and remove it. Why are you writing about women? Go and remove it. I said, no, please, I'm sorry, I will not remove it. It's the word of God. I pray God will help us. God will deliver us. If you read the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1:18, the Bible make it clear. It said, it said, it said the, the gospel is foolishness unto them that are perishing. He said, the gospel of Christ is foolishness unto them that are perishing. What does that mean? It means that people are not, people are not taking it, they take it like, a, like it's a joke. It's like foolish thing. When you, when you read the Bible or, or when you read the Bible or explain, you try to explain, they, t- they tell you, go and sit down. Because they, it doesn't mean anything to them. 
and they are perishing. The gospel of Christ is foolishness to them that are perishing. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God Almighty will take away the spirit of Jezebel in churches. I pray God will bring revival to churches. To churches, God will raise people to shout these things to the congregation. I pray God will touch these preachers. God will touch their hearts. I pray God will touch their hearts in the name of Jesus. Tell your congregation, tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Show them the word of God. Show them the word of God. Those people, their blood is on your head. Their blood is on your head. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 33, 9. Ezekiel 33 verse 9. I read. Okay. Nevertheless, if thou want the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Listen properly, please. Ezekiel 33, verse 9. Nevertheless, if thou want the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou, thou hast delivered thy soul. This passage of the Bible is saying that when you have warned them, when you have warned them, that if they refuse, they will pay for their iniquity. They will pay for their iniquity. But your own soul, you have delivered it from destruction. Because whenever you see things, you don't talk it out. The sin will be on you. Those people around you, you when you see them in things like this, you rebuke them. You bring these things out to public. Not what they hide again. Since they cannot preach it, me as I am here, I don't have church. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. Neither I am an evangelist. I just repented. I, li I like reading the word of God. I like listening to the, to, the, to the gospel, the true gospel. I'm making the video, not that I'm a preacher, I'm a, I'm a pastor. I don't have any church. I don't have any ministry. I'm just speaking. I want to speak so that the people that will watch the video, they will know and to hear this word of God. You have to warn people. The pastors, warn your congregation, warn them, teach them, teach them the way of God. Teach them the way of God Almighty. Teach them the way of God Almighty. Teach them the way of God. Don't be afraid. Teach them the way of God, not your own way. Not your own way. Show them the way of God. God have principle. The principle of God. That no, there's no problem, sister. Sister Musu. She wrote it. That's why they call us born again Christian or old fashioned Christian. Whether old fashioned or not, or born again or not, any name you like, you call me. We are in my zone where I stay here, yeah, not everyone talk to me. Not everybody. But I thank God. They are not talking to me, but anyway, I meet you, I greet you. I greet you. I don't have to look like the world. No. It's an error. After repentance, as a Christian woman or a believer, you have to be different. You have to be different. In the book of 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 17. If you read that passage of the Bible, you'll see what the Bible says. 
He said, we should, be, we should come out of among them. Be ye separated. What has light and darkness have to do together? After repentance, you must be different. You must, you must be different. You must look different in every way of your life. You don't have to look the same. Those old things must go by. You must allow them to go. You must allow them to go. Those old things must go. They must go. The old things must pass by. The way, we, the way you dress must be, be, be old. It must go away. The way you talk must go away. Where you gather must, must go away. You have, to, you have to have new new sisters and brothers in Christ. The ones are striving to make it to heaven. Those things must go away. It must go away. It must go away. It must go away. You cannot be entangled with those things again. You must go away. Those things must go. You must let them go. You must let them go. I pray God will help us. I pray God Almighty will help us and have mercy upon us. Any preacher, please, tell your, tell your congregation, tell those people you are, you are leading, tell them, tell the women how they should dress. They should dress modestly. They should dress and cover their nakedness, not half naked inside churches. Not half naked inside churches, no. We have to dress decently and cover ourselves properly. I pray God Almighty will have mercy upon us. Finally, I read from the book of Romans, Romans 2.11. Romans 2.11, because God Almighty does not respect anybody. He does not respect our title, neither our, 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 our post or our age or what we have done on earth here. He does not respect us. He make it clear that he does not respect any, anybody. Romans 2.11, I read, For for there is no respect of person with God. He said God does not respect anybody. Does not respect anybody. Whether you are pastor, you are bishop, you are G.O. You are evangelist, you are, you are preacher, you are Bible teaching, uh, te teaching a uh, brother or sister. God does not respect those titles. You are just bearing those titles here on earth. He does not respect them. If we don't walk in the way of God, God will judge us. God will judge us if we don't walk in the way of God. At the last day, God will judge us. We stand before God for judgment. We stand before God for judgment. Everything we have used our life here on earth will give account. We'll give account. Everything we have, we have done here on earth will give account to God Almighty. God does not respect us in any way. does not respect our title. Or maybe you are, you are the owner of the church or you are owner of, a, owner of one big congregation or you are owner of one big church or where, where recognize a, a, a name on earth here. You are, your population, your, your gathering or your, your congregation are many. Then let God respect you for that. No, God does not respect anyone. Even with titles, no. Does not respect. You must give account. Those people you are teaching, those people you are, you, are, you, are, you are preaching to, those people you are carrying under your control, under your bondage, under your captivity, you have to relieve them. You have to let them know the word of God. You have put those people under, under captivity, under bondage. Under bondage, under captivity. Some of them, they, 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 they give them title. So that they cannot leave that congregation. They will be there, but they, they, the truth will not be sp spoken to them. They will just be there. They are inside church. How can someone live all his life or her life on earth? See, after he died, the person will go to hell. For what? It's an error. It's a very painful thing. The Bible makes it clear that the, the truth will set us free. You have to let these people go. You have to let them know the truth. 
You have to let them know the truth so that they will be free. In the book of John, John 8, 32 said that, we, that you, should, you should know the truth and the truth will set you free. Let these people know the truth. Liberate them from that captivity. Liberate them from that bondage. You have, you have put them under bondage and captivity in that doctrine of that church, in that doctrine of that congregation. Liberate these people. Liberate them. Let them go. Let the truth set them free in the name of Jesus. Let the truth set them free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the truth set them free in the name of Jesus. I beg you in the name of God Almighty, tell these people the truth. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Some of the, the, the pastor's wife, the, 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 the congregation, the women, the women in that congregation, they are, they are looking up to you, the way you are dressing. They are looking up to you, the way you behave. They are looking up to you, what you are doing. They copy you. They copy you. When you tell them, they tell you, my pastor wife. But my pastor wife used to do it. But my pastor wife used to say so. But my pastor wife never told me. But my pastor wife never said it. Because they are following you. What you will tell them is what they listen more. Teach them. Let them know. Let them know. I pray God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray God Almighty will help us and deliver us, we women. Deliver us from worldliness in the name of Jesus. I thank every one of you for your time. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. I pray God will help us, women. I pray God will help us, women. We take away vanity from our eyes and our hearts in the name of Jesus. I pray God will deliver us from worldliness in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God Almighty will set us free from bondage and captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. From religious bondage and captivity in the name of Jesus. I pray God will deliver us from re religion, bondage and captivity in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God will liberate us in the name of Jesus. I pray God will liberate us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray God Almighty will liberate every one of us in the name of Jesus. We have gone into captivity. If you have gone into captivity, knowing or knowingly, I pray God will liberate you this afternoon in the name of Jesus. I pray God will open our eyes to know, to understand in the name of Jesus. I pray God will help us. God Almighty, help us women. Help us, help us in the name of Jesus. Father, help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, help us. Set us free. Set us free, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the mercy. God has shown so much mercy to us. This very year, this very year, just these 20 days from this year, the remaining 20 days, God has kept us from January to this December. I thank him, even in our sin. Even we are not faithful to God. God has kept us. I thank God Almighty for keeping us alive. Father, we thank you. May your name be glorified this hour. May your name be lifted up, O oh Lord, in heaven. Father, Lord, we thank you. It's not our own power. Father, we thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray for the remaining 20 days of this year. I pray God Almighty will keep us safe, keep our family and our loved ones safe. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank every one of you. May God be with you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shalom.